uh, and I'm the community manager for um, Third Academy. This is the second section that we're having in our uh, uh, five weeks community management class. We had the first section on Monday where we talked about introduction to Web3 community management. Um, we talked about the average salary, we talked about common challenges that Web3 community managers, you know, have to face in this ever evolving industry. We also talked about, you know, the pros and the cons. If you consider um, if Web3 community management is for you or not, and if this is a career path that you would want to do for the long term. All right, so today we um we have um James who is joining us for the space today. Um James is he's a James is a um is a marketer, he's also a designer and he's a he's an artist, a very amazing artist working to empower um creators and artists in the space. Currently he's working with Raribo on their marketing team and he has a um, he has a mantra that I love so much, you know, just the first time I came in that I heard that, you know, I read that, you know, I, I just, I mean, it just, I, just I, I was able to relate, right, that tell people Web3 doesn't matter, right, so beyond the technology, right, Web3 is actually um, changing the way that people and businesses interact. So I'm, I'm so excited to be hosting James on our space today. So um, James, we would um, want to hear from you if you could just give us an introduction of yourself and you know your origin story into Web3. You know, let's get to meet you. Yeah, first, um, can everyone hear me okay? Yes, everyone okay. can, then the whole Okay, one. yeah. <clears throat> I just wanted to make sure I uh, had some technical difficulties there, but um, yeah, my name is James. Thank you for having me on today. I'm. Uh, I'm excited to be in this space with you all and just to share a little bit. Um, I guess I'll start, like Rita said, with my origin story in Web3. Um, it's not a very like glamorous story. It's it's full of a little bit of heartbreak, a little bit of struggle, um, like I'm sure many of you have experienced. But um, prior to Web3, I was uh, running a marketing agency in Web2 and we specialized in you know, developing go-to-market strategy, social media marketing, a little bit of design, web design, graphic design, in addition to um, helping build communities and followings for these Web2 brands. Um, and it was toward the end of 2021, I was approached by a recruiter to um, to connect with basically a, a guy who was working on a startup in Web3. And we were invited to, um, I was invited to be part of the startup, to be the CMO, to help kind of create the marketing strategy for what was going to be kind of this new startup and um, building like the upwork of Web3. Um, the long story short with that is that the, the ending of that did not go very well. Um, we've all experienced kind of the hard parts of Web3. I got to experience it right away. Um, and so the, I'll, I'll spare all the details, but it, um, it just it ended a little bit roughly. And what ended up happening though, is that through my experience initially in Web3 um, and those initial kind of interactions with this kind of new startup, I fell in love with the potential of the technology. Um, there is so much beauty and power in decentralization and in true ownership and in helping people understand that they can have ownership of their assets as creators. Um, and the people who are building in the space were just so fascinating that I, I was just intoxicated and I was so drawn to the space. And so um, I was kind of hooked, even though I had this really bad experience, um, I was hooked and just fell in love with the space. Um, what ended up kind of, <clears throat> excuse me, what ended up evolving out of that is that I transitioned away from my Web2 work and started marketing in Web3, started working with other companies and freelancing and things like that. 
And um, I got my first role at a company called Floor and was helping with social media and community marketing there. And now I'm at Rarible. So I'm sure there are questions that you might have and we can fill in the blanks as we go, but um, that's kind of my origin story here in the space. Yeah, I think that's um, actually very interesting. And, you know, like most people that, myself too, and like most people that, you know, I've had the opportunity to talk to, I think, you know, there's just something with, you know, coming into Web3 and, you know, having that, you know, experience and, you know, still being here. I think, you know, a majority of the people, even, you know, after the, you know, sometimes not so nice experience, they still find a lot of potential in the space, you know, for them to just keep being here. You know, I remember earlier when I just started in the space, you know, lost a lot of money buying into the gens. You know, there was one time that, you know, I bought into a toku and I was just, you know, trying to dollar cost average into a meme and, you know, just thinking about it, feeling so stupid that, you know, I would take such an action. But, you know, at the end of the day, those are the things that just helps you to make better decisions as you move forward and, you know, see how much potential the space has for you to, like, you know, do something, build a career, impact the lives of people and all the other interesting things but you know just to move forward since we are talking about um community and you know this is a space for like people who are interested in building communities managing communities and you know just understanding like the intricacies because web3 you know is all about the people you know would want you to um like tell us like the fundamental principles like when it comes to because i i know that you are very big on people community so like the fundamental principles of like community building in web3 what do we you know have to know about that mm, yeah so you already touched on this but i say it all the time um without people web3 doesn't matter and without people community doesn't exist right like what are the yeah. what are the building blocks of communities it is it is the people it's the individuals who show up and participate in the community that you're building. Um, if you look at like the core definition of what it means to be part of a community, um, you can you can look back at any society all throughout the various kind of evolutions of humanity. Um, community is just a group of people who are sharing a place and sharing some sort of characteristic or commonality or thing that they have in common. Um, and so you can find community in a lot of places. You can find community if you are in a school or at a university because you're all there with the same purpose. You're all there to learn. You're all there in the same place. Um, you can also find community in, um, it's so funny, I'm watching my character move around and I can see my mouth moving and I'm just getting used to this, but um, you can find shared community in a room like what we're doing right now. Like we're all sharing a virtual space and this has the same kind of goal and topic and mission is that we want to learn and share together. There's community there. Um, you can find it in so many different places in religion and in society and food and all parts of culture, there's community. Um, What's interesting is that Web3 community breaks some of the typical norms that we've experienced community um, in our kind of IRL lives or our lives outside of the computer um, in that we're not sharing a physical space, we're sharing a digital space, which means community is no longer limited to your geography and where you live, but now you can expand beyond the walls of the room that you're in and beyond the geography lines of the country you're in and actually connect with anyone around the world. And that brings a lot of challenges to community, but I think the fundamentals are still the same. We are still getting together and joining our un under one quote unquote roof and that roof is Web3 and that building is kind of the space for whatever project or you know, thing that you're, you're gathering around, but we're all still individuals. And when you're taking care of community, you have to remember that you're also you're also caring for people. Um, sometimes it's hard because we're all hiding behind our keyboards and we have avatars or PFPs or you know different JPEGs that represent who we are. But at the end of the day, there's a human being behind that keyboard, and they have real life things going on. They have 
jobs and food and money and bills and relational issues and friendship issues and, you know, family issues and things that like we all deal with, every one of us deals with. Um, and I think sometimes we forget that in Web3. We forget that there is real life community. There's real life um, connection that's happening there. Just because it's through a keyboard or through a screen doesn't make it any less real. It just is a little bit of a different format. So at the end of the day, I always zoom out and just say, it's people. Your community, whether it's five people or 5,000 people or 5 million people, they're all people. They're all individual people. Um, and when you're marketing, when you're building a community, when you're communicating to your community, remembering that you're communicating to real people, I think is the key to helping make sure that you can actually relate and connect with them in a meaningful way. Mm. Yeah. That's, you know, I, as you were just, as you were speaking, you know, I was you know, just thinking about it. And, you know, personally, I think, you know, with Web3 and the technology, it has, you know, brought forward, like, the importance of community to the forefront by brands are now seeing like how important it is for them to put like conscious effort into you know building a building their community right so the it's not it's no longer about with the beer market and everything it's no longer about the hype it's no longer about the giveaways it's no longer about the gimmicks Right. It's now about real, like we're down to like building for real because you you are building for people. These are real people, people with emotions, right? And you know, for for you to, you know, people make decisions based, most people make decisions based on their emotions, right? So understanding like what will make people to take action, right, is very important. And you know, with, with the importance of web three, you know, this has also like brought up like the, imp the importance of, um, I mean, communities in Web3 has also brought community managers to the forefront, right? But, you know, as Web3 is evolving, there's a lot that's happening at once, if I should say that. There's a lot that's happening at once. So what would you say are, like, um, some of the common challenges that, you know, community managers face and, you know, how can they deal with it? How can they better manage the communities and, manage the the activities happening in the communities in their day-to-day -day, like job yeah um i'm so sorry the the connection maybe is in and out a little bit but i think i'm gathering kind of your question here and i think one of the things that when you're working in community um you have to remember that it's it's not just a job like that you that you treat as a job. Um, and let me explain what I mean by that. Um, anytime you're working with people, you have to remember that there are, there, are, um, there are much bigger things at play than just the interaction that you're having currently. So for example, we've all seen it, but like on Discord um, or on a Twitter DM, we've had a lot of, um, we've had a lot of instances where interactions with other people are kind of ugly like it just doesn't go well it's very spicy it's very aggressive it can be very contentious um we deal with that all the time in this space because like rita said um like rita said there's a lot of emotion that comes into kind of entering a space especially when you're dealing with buying and trading assets um and so when you when you look at a community and you find kind of the moving pieces that are within that community, it's important to remember that authentic connection in any growing community is always going to be the superpower. Um, the more people who you can authentically connect with and have meaningful connections with, the, the folks that you get to know beyond just the JPEG that represents their, their name, but Getting, getting to like actually get to know who they are as people, the more meaningful those, strength, those strong connections will be. Um, and that's really what helps you scale a community, right? Like it's really hard to build connections with 5,000 people all at once. But if you build connections with five people and you, and you build relationships with just five people, 
and those five people build relationships with other people, um, eventually the exponential growth can happen and it can come out of that. Yeah, you know, this, what you just mentioned last, I think there was one time that I, I, I think I was on the space and I mentioned it and I said, you know, community is about one person. And really, I think, you know, it's about the contest, right? Because, you know, just like you mentioned, having 5,000 people, right? It's, I mean, it's almost impossible to connect, you know, individually with everybody in the, in your community at that point in time. But, you know, one advice that I usually give to community managers is, you know, to focus at one person at a time, right? So focus on, if just like you mentioned, if you can build with five, right, you know, create an atmosphere where, you know, that five are able to interact with others and then, you know, make people show up and, you know, just engage because, you know, engagement is one of the ways that you can actually build relationship and build that loyalty in your community. And it's it's just like a ripple effect. Right. So if you if you can if you can connect because you you mentioned it right, it's more about the authentic connections. It it has gone beyond being in this profession just to have a job, right? For job's sake. Right. So you have to, as a community manager, I think it the, it comes into play where you have to have that passion, right? You have to know that, okay, this is you know what you want to do, right? So as the space is evolving that you also have to evolve. The strategies that you use in your communities also has to evolve, right? So more meaningful things, right? Over like surface level, um, over like surface level um, things. And, you know, we've had, we've, we've been speaking um for the past 20 minutes. So if anyone has questions, you know, for I know that most of us have had the um chance to manage a community in the past or just getting started. Um, feel free to um put your um questions on the chat section and we would get to it. You know, but before um we get to that, um I know that um James has been speaking a lot about you know building communities the right way. But can you give us like some best practices? What are like some best practices that community managers you know ought to do and ought not to do like in their day to day job? Just to be clear on that. Yeah. Um, oh, that's a tricky question because it's it's um, it's different based on every day and every role. Um, so I don't know if I can give you like a a definitive five best things to do, but I think um, it's more about your angle and your approach. Um, people know when you're trying to sell them something. Like we all have we all have the radar that says, nope, they're selling me something. And you can easily, you can easily sense that because we're so inundated with advertisement all the time. And it's, it's a really tricky thing to navigate. Um, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to know when you are a community manager, how to communicate with folks authentically. Um, it's and it's not an easy thing to learn. But what I would say is, being your authentic self rather than trying to like mm. create a persona is the best advice that I can give you. Um, what are things not to do? Like, don't write people off. Um, don't don't just shut them down. Like, have have a little bit of patience and empathy. Um, it's it's tricky, right? Because sometimes people are there with with ulterior motives, but. I think you can identify the ones who are really struggling and looking to learn and trying to find ways to integrate. Um, or you can, you can literally just like easily, you, what I'm trying to say is like, it's easy to spot the ones who are there with, with kind of hidden or bad motives, but the ones who are there with good motives and who want to learn be patient with them and help them learn. Because at, at one point we were all brand new newbies for um, in this space. Like we were all we were all confused about what it meant to open a wallet and remember your seed phrase or write it down, but don't write it here and don't lose it. And don't share it with someone. What's a transaction? How do you how do you bridge Ethereum? What does this mean? Like we've all had those confusing things. And sometimes when you've been in this space, um, 
you forget those early days. You forget what it's like to be brand new. And the people who helped you learn when you were brand new, um, like they were patient with you. They were, they, were, they were the ones who helped you enter the space. So that's kind of my, <clears throat> maybe my like general advice for your day-to-day -day work. Um, the other side is also like protect your time. Um, the work of marketing, especially in Web3 and especially in community management, like it can literally be a 24-hour job, but it shouldn't be. You should unplug. You should sign off. You should go touch some grass, like they say. You should like take time to exhale and rest because if you if you are constantly connected, if you're constantly online, eventually you'll burn out and you don't want to burn out. You have to preserve your own and make sure you fill up your own tank. Um, Rita, do you, if you don't have another question, I, there's a couple of questions here that I can, I can answer in the chat. Yeah, yeah, please go ahead. Yeah, um, so George asks, um, must you have a tech skill to be a community manager? Um, so yes and no. Here's what I would say. Community managers need like a very basic understanding of technology. Um, you, you need to know how to function your computer. You know, you need to know how to not click on scam links on Discord. You need to have kind of a, a foundational knowledge of technology. I don't think you need to actually have like design skills or be a developer or know how to code to become a community manager because community managers are much more important is your people skills, like your ability to interact with others and to connect with others. Um, sure, if you can design some cool things or maybe you can make some like funny memes, things like that, that can add to it, but I don't think it's a requirement. So um, I would say, yeah, people skills are much more important than tech skills. Um, and then Lewis also asked, what are the top important skills that every community, community manager must have? Um, it kind of goes into segue with what with George asked here, but um, patience, empathy, kindness, um, but also the ability to like help people understand how to navigate kind of tricky conversations and issues. Uh, so it's it's much more like soft skills rather than like oh go get your certificate or go get your degree in you know coding or development or design. It's much more like connect with people authentically and know how to have a relationship and build a relationship with someone. Um, it's, it's definitely much more on the people side, which is why I love this field. Like I have technical skills, but what I find I use most in my field is the, the people side, the people skills. Does anyone else have any other questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Yeah, thank you very much for that. If you have any question, yeah, feel free to drop it and um, James would um, get to that quickly. Um, just, I wanted to also like go back to what you said before about, you know, being yourself. I think, you know, that's very, very important. And also the um, being patient, right? Building community takes time. It, take, it takes time. And over time, like over the years that, you know, I've, got, I've been in the space and having the, gotten the privilege to, Okay, someone has a question. Um, someone say, how do I start from where to get into Web3? Okay, um, can you see the question on the chat? I think someone's asking, how yeah. do I start to become a community manager? Yeah, yeah. Meant. <clears throat> okay, so let's see. I want to make sure I do these in order. Um, how do you start? Where do you go? Um, so, it's a great question. There's a lot of great job boards out there. Um, I would suggest checking out um, web3.career is a really great resource. Um, and I also know Third Academy has some job board opportunities as well. Um, essentially, if you want to work in Web3, um, then you have to start to like get involved in Web3. Um, that's uh, it's a tricky part because there's there's lots of opportunity and also there's a lot of people applying. Um, one thing I would say, George, is, and I, I feel you, um, it might feel like you know everything. And Web3 can sometimes feel that way. 
But the number one piece of advice that I give to folks who are working in this space is to stay curious because everything is moving very quickly and you might know everything today, but tomorrow it could change. And so always be learning and constantly be reading and, and soaking up knowledge. That will be one of the best things that sets you apart from other people who are trying to get roles as community managers. Awesome. Um, Mayank says, hey, James. Hey, good to see you. Great, great to be here. Thanks for hanging with us. I'm sorry if I mispronounced your name. Yeah, does anyone else have any other questions? If you have any questions, feel free to um, put them in the chat. And okay, I think we have um, a question. Yeah, yeah. Um, how do how would people or how would companies react if I don't have any experience in Web3? This is what's nice, is Web3 is such a new technology that I don't think the expectation is that you have a ton of experience. Um, but I will say most people who are hiring in Web3, if they're hiring for a role, they're going to look for people who are passionate about Web3. And so you might not have work experience in Web3, but they're certainly going to look for people who would say, yeah, I, I am active. I, I'm part of the community of this project or I love DeFi or, you know, I'm, I'm very much into innovation around blockchain technology. You know, those kinds of things are, are really important. I don't think it's as important to say, oh, I've got three years of working experience in Web3, because not many people have three years of working experience in this space. I barely have three years of working experience in this space. Um, it's your other skills that I think you start to look at that translate to Web3 and your other work experience. Um, even jobs like maybe you were working in retail, but you're a team player, you're, you're good at working with people or customer service, or, or maybe you've worked in construction. And so you understand how to, how to build things. You understand the process of what it means to take a project from start to finish. Like those are some intangible skills that maybe, maybe they don't exactly directly relate to Web3. They actually do. Like they're very helpful in Yeah, and you know, just to say, I personally for me, I I I've, I I was not a CM in Web two before I became a CM in Web three, and I think there are a lot of ways that you can actually use to um portray your skills to you know show that you know you are capable of doing this, and you know being passionate, right? Because one thing that is very um one thing that we can all see is that we're all trying to figure this thing out. Right, that's one thing that I believe we're all trying to figure Web3 out. And, you know, if you're able to show that you are passionate and you're able to, you know, also build your personal brand, because most brands, they know that, okay, by bringing you on, um, there's something for them, right? Your personal branding is also there. And, you know, by collaborating with you and also your, your, your um, ability to communicate effectively, communication skills is actually a very important skill, right? So just um reflecting all of these skills and also if you have um previous um if you have worked just like james mentioned in a similar role probably could be customer success or you know any um role where you have to deal directly with people i mean who says that you can't work as a community manager right so you just have to balance it up with understanding the technology right understanding what web3 is about because if you don't understand what web3 is you might have some challenges for instance someone comes into your community and you know they have a question just like he was mentioning being patient and explaining from somebody for example the technology around your um project i mean if you don't understand that how would you be able to communicate that to the next person right so we have um another question in the chat he said why in web3 we still use web2 tools even web2 social media your thoughts on it that's a good question yeah 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 <clears throat> um so it's hard because web3 is still so new that you have to go where where people are um so for example oh, i'm sorry is is someone speaking no 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 go ahead no one's speaking okay um what i would say is that 
a, a good example would be, so let's pretend you live in New York City. And I don't know where everyone's located, but let's just say you live in New York City. And there's a storefront there. It's a it's an ice cream shop. And they only have one location. They're not a major like brand that's everywhere. It's only in New York City. And it's just an ice cream shop. If that ice cream shop puts advertisements in California, which is on the other side of the country, or they put advertisements in Australia, um, that's not going to be a very like wise use of their marketing budget and their advertising budget because the, the place where the people are that they can reach are in New York City. So they should put ads in New York City and they should, they should be reaching people who are in New York City. Web3 is still onboarding people. The amount of people who are in Web3 today is less than 1% of the people who use Web2 and use the internet today. Our job in Web3 is to meet people where they're at and help them onboard into this space so that they can see the benefits of this technology. Sometimes that means we have to use Web2 tools like X or Twitter or Facebook or Instagram and reach people where they are. Because if we plan to onboard them and bring them into Web3, we have to go where they are. Otherwise, if only the only places we talk about Web3 are in Web3 and we never go outside of the Web3 bubble to reach those folks, then we won't ever have a chance to mass adopt anyone. Like there, there won't be any of that. Um, go ahead. You said you have another question. I think we have a lot of UI issues <laughs> with Web3, most of these Web3 applications. Okay. Yeah, I think we have a question in the chat. Yeah, um, Jesse, let's see here. You can still hear me okay? I'm just making sure. Yeah, yeah, it's clear. Okay. Um, I see from Jesse, what advice would you give to anyone trying to scale a community on social media? Add value. So if you're on, on social media, everyone out there is trying to extract value. They're trying to like sell you something, get something, my advice would be add value, add real value. And the more value that you add, the more things that you bring, um, that's where you'll start to see people who, who will start to join your community um, and start to follow what you're doing and what you're building. Because at the end of the day, when you're, in, when you're interacting with someone, even in person, face to face, if all that person is doing is trying to sell you something, you don't really want to spend time with them. But if you interact with someone and you're engaging and you both leave that engagement fulfilled or energized or excited, um, then you then I think you'll you both feel enriched. And it's the same way in community building and in social media building. Um, and Jesse also asked, what is better for building a community, Telegram or Discord, if you want to focus on one platform? Um, Discord is mu much more natural for community building. Telegram is a little bit harder for organization. Um, oh, honest. I don't know why it doesn't it doesn't say your name, but um, Anastasia. So sorry. It the the issues here on this platform are a little tricky, but um, it shows me that you're Jesse. But hi, Anastasia. Um, so what's better for building a community? I don't know if it's Discord or Telegram necessarily, as much as understanding like what platform works best for you. Um, Discord has a little bit more like organizational tools. You have channels that you can build. You can create, you know, token gated communities a little bit easier. Telegram is much more like direct chatting. Um, so it's not quite the same. So they're very different platforms, but you could either one, as long as you know where your community is and what platform is best for you. Yeah, also, I think it also depends on the needs of your community if you decide to focus on one. And also, I think it also another thing to consider is to go where your community members are. If your um, potential community members are already spending their time in one platform, then it's easier for you to, you know, also build your um, community there. Um, just like um, we were saying about some best practices for um, community managers, just 
<clears throat> I just wanted to also like um talk more on that before we um okay. Okay, someone said, um, does any one of you have Instagram or at least third academy? Uh what do you mean by third academy? I, I use Instagram but not for web three stuff and no, I'm hardly ever there because I have a lot of other social media that I have to deal with. But um, okay, what do you mean by okay? Do you mean like if Third Academy has a an Instagram account? Is that what you're asking? If that's what you're asking, the answer is no. For now, we don't have an Instagram account. All right, so um, I just wait for you to clear that up. Yeah, but I guess I answered it. So, um, before we move on, okay, cool. Um, before we move on, you know, I just wanted to talk a bit more on before we ask um James another question. I think we've been having a very interesting space, and oh, someone said I can't send my question. All right, I, can you? I'm going to mute myself now so that you can unmute and speak. All right, try unmuting now and let's see if it will work. My young, I got. I hope I got that right. Can you try unmuting? Just click on the um microphone tab by the right side of your screen, and make sure there's no red crossing line. It's open. Okay, I think the question is here. Um, James, do you want me to read that out for you? No, I've got it right here. So my uncle says, I've been in the crypto space working as a community moderator since two and a half years and actually have a tough time finding my way to be a community manager. Do you have any tips to follow up on or or I can work with you to gain some new skills? I believe this may be a good way, but looking forward to your response. Um, I will say it is, it is hard. The moderator to manager role is tricky because community managers, um, there's just not as many, right? Like one, one project might have 10 community moderators for every one community manager. And so it's tricky when you, when you look at it, the, the pool of opportunities is much smaller. Um, I love that you're very involved in Web3. I think my encouragement to you would be keep an eye out on job boards. There are lots of people who are hiring for community managers all the time. Um, keep applying and keep putting yourself out there. Um, find ways to differentiate yourself, you know, maybe maybe make a creative resume or find a unique way to reach out to them. Um, it's it's a tough space. Um, the job that I, I have now, over 1,500 people applied to it. And it's, it's very overwhelming for a hiring manager to hire when they've got that many resumes to sort through. It's a really tricky thing to do. So my my encouragement is to keep going, keep applying, keep doing the work that you're doing. And I think eventually you'll find the right fit, um, but it just takes time. It is, it's a really tricky market right now, especially because it's a bear market. Yeah, and you know, just to add to that, um, I think sometimes you don't have to feel 100% ready to apply for the job, or you don't have to meet, you know, 100% of the job description. Right, because one thing about Web3 is there's a lot of learning on the job that will happen as you, you know, as you take on the road. And with each community that you deal with, they it's it's unique. There are unique experiences, right, that you have with each community. So even though you don't meet 100% of the job description, you know, just find a way to try and stand out because you are contesting against hundreds of people for that particular job, right? So you don't want to sound like everyone else. You want to do something that would, you know, make you stand out. So you can apply with, you can even apply with a video, right? You can use a video to apply, you know, use your portfolio instead of like just a resume because, you know, with AI, it's very easy to just get a resume, but like a portfolio would give the hiring manager like, um, give them like an insight into like your experience and what you have been up to in Web3, what value have you brought to the people and to the other communities that, you know, you have come in contact with and, you know, how can you also bring this value to them, right? So 
just you, you don't need to be 100 percent right because you know people they find it difficult you know they're trying to get that 100 percent you know before they go ahead and give themselves the chance right there are lots of um low entry um um positions that you can get and you know as you work your way up you gain more the experience that you need to bring on higher value um so we have another question on the chat would you um like to get on that <clears throat> um I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm not sure what Fox Market is. Um, so I might skip that one. Which of the social media is best for promoting oneself or to secure a job? Um, definitely LinkedIn. LinkedIn is helpful. Um, it depends on the role you're looking for. Twitter is Twitter or X now um, is probably one of the most like popular in Web3. Um, so definitely I would recommend to have a strong presence there. LinkedIn is helpful for when you're doing a job search, just because it's much more geared toward the kind of professional team. Um, that's that's the folks who are there. So, um, yeah, I would say LinkedIn and X or Twitter would be my my top recommendations. I'm not sure what Fox Market is. If someone wants to, um, if someone wants to explain Fox Market to me, maybe I can speak to it. Yeah, I don't think I understand that. Um... It would be great to add more context to that. Um, yes, on the platform, I think both of the platforms they bring their own unique, you know, benefits, and you just have to understand your needs. And uh, you know, there are lots of um, hiring managers in, on LinkedIn that you can easily assess. You know, you can easily know that okay, they are involved with this project or not, and you know, send them a DM and you know, just pitch yourself. But you know, the the the, the best advice I would also I would always give you know, just like Mayan said, right? Make create content, create content, build your personal brand, right? There's something about having a voice. So you want to um have a voice for yourself, have an opinion, right? It's very important. Have an opinion, find a way to stand out. Um, as time goes on, you would attract, you know, people to you as you consistently show the value that you have. Um, we're almost coming to the end of our, our section, but um, before we get to that, I have one more question. I have one um, question for James. If you have any more questions. We've had so many amazing questions so far, and I hope that you've got the answer that you need. If not, I mean, James is here, so feel free, <laughs> feel free to ask him, ask away all the questions that you have, and he would try his best to give you an answer. Um, so I wanted to ask, like, um, I think, um, someone, you know, asked before, but you know, just for everyone who missed it, you know, for someone who wants to start a career in Web3 community management, what advice would you give to them? Um, it's, it, there's two things. One, get involved with communities and be active in communities as a participant with no expectation, not to like sneak your way into a job. Here's why. The more that you are involved in other communities as a community member, the more you'll understand the pain points and the struggles of what it means to be a community member. And the better you can understand those struggles and pain points, the better off you will be at helping other community members when you're in a community or you're working Ed. and helping them. Yeah. Um, the second thing would be persistence. Um, it's it's a very daunting market, like we said, and oftentimes you're competing with hundreds, if not thousands of people for job opportunities. The most important thing in Web3 is showing up every day and continuing to be there. We're early. Like less than 1% of the people who use the internet are using Web3 today, but it's coming. Um, the brands we're working with, the names that we're talking to, like there it's coming. And it takes time, but it's coming. And so be persistent and be consistent and keep showing up um, and stay involved. Yes. Um, I, see, I see one more here. What do I think of AI? Um, I think AI is really fascinating. 
and there is an advantage in Web3. Um, AI is a tool that you should use. It's not a replacement for an individual, but it's a tool that you can put in your tool belt. And so maybe English isn't your first language, for example. Using AI is actually what I'm finding to be a much more powerful tool for helping people who are overcoming language barriers than I've ever seen Google Translate be. It's so powerful. I've used it for helping me communicate with people who are, are in a different language and it's really powerful that way. But you can also learn skills through AI and you can create content through AI. So I think there's a lot of power there, but I wouldn't view it as a, an end all be all. It's just another tool. It's like a, a carpenter can buy a hammer and then a new hammer can come out that's a little better. Maybe that new hammer will help, but at the end of the day, it's the carpenter who swings the hammer who makes the difference. And so, yes, it's a tool and you can upgrade your tools, but it matters more how you wield the tool than the tool itself. Yeah, great point. And then someone said, do you think, okay, AI is of advantage, the web three or disadvantage? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I wanted to also like touch on the first point that you said about getting involved. You know, I think in communities, right, without like any expectation of you know, sneaking your way in, because, you know, an advice I would give to you as a community manager is, um, okay, we have a question, but let me quickly say this before we get on that. One advice I would give is that, you know, if you're, if you're clueless, right, about, you know, what, you know, the basic activities that community managers have to do or what you have to do, you know, being involved in communities that you like, communities that, uh, finding their way in Web3 and just taking note of what is happening there, right? Not just taking note, but also being actively involved, just like James said, will help you know members pain points, right? And you you would be there as a member, right? So you, you also have like an objective, right? Why I remember you're going through the other experiences that other members are going through, right? You're also, you're also seeing how, if you were a community manager, how you would also respond so these issues that members of the community are going through, right? So being involved, being active is very, as a community manager, is actually, you know, very, very important. And, you know, one more question, it um, said, um, what is the least salary for Web3 community managers around the world? Um, do you want to get on that, James? Um, this is, I hate this question, and not because of you asking it, but because of the the dire situation of the of the um, kind of industry. The least yeah. salary is zero. There are some people who are being exploited, and who, who have been tricked into working for free, or maybe they get a free NFT or something. Um, scammers, kind of. I think like yes, scammers, but. Um, but also I think people who are just ignorant to understand that when you, when you hire someone to work, you should be paid. Um, and so my encouragement to all of you here is don't work for free because your time and your, your skills are worth something. Um, it, like Mayank says here, it does depend, you know, region to region and companies. Um, I've seen, you know, 35, 35K a year in some regions can be, can be, pretty great. And in other regions, it can be a very low uh, job offer. Um, there are there are some good kind of, here's, here's what I'll say. There, there are other communities who are doing work in this space to try to bring more transparency to salaries and wages. Um, just don't sell yourself short. Like you, if you're working full time for a company, you should be able to put food on your table and pay your bills, you, you shouldn't have to struggle. And so um, keep that in mind. Yeah, very important. Um, yeah, so I think we are almost at the end of our section. Um, so but the last question is, you know, for like, what resources would you um, recommend for like community managers to learn more about community? Do you have any, you know, favorite um, articles or resources that you could reference for us? Yeah. Um, 
Am I allowed to point to like other projects and things? I don't want to shill if I'm not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, shill, shill, shill. Yeah, um, there's a friend of mine, her name is AMA. Um, and actually Rita, I'm going to connect you with her because I think she could be a good speaker um, for this as well. I think um, we, we, we actually have AMA for um, in two weeks time. She's very, oh, she's an do. amazing yeah, yeah, person. Yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> tell her I said hi when you have her on. I'm just going to show her time sure. for you, but she's working on a project called Angry Mods. Um, mm -hmm. I'll put it here in the chat. Um, I don't know the Twitter exactly, but you should check them out. She's, she's doing a lot of work in um, like wage transparency for community roles. And so I mean, I'm very excited that you have her coming on. She's She'll be a great resource for you all, but she's also like a just an advocate for community managers globally in this space. So um, her name is AMA, but the uh, the Twitter there is 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 their project. So that would be a great resource if you're if you're looking for um, more resources and other people who are working in this space. Um, I would start there, and then. Um, Probably that that's probably a good, you guys are already connected here and Third Academy is a great resource. Um, you, you're already kind of like ahead of the game if you've been part of this group. So maybe those two are where I'll, uh, where I'll leave it. Yes, thank you um, very much. This has been a very, very interesting space. And you know, I have a lot of points that I, I have noted down that you have mentioned and you know, personally for me to moving forward that, you know, I would also like take into, um, yeah, into my work. So, um, we just want to say thank you again for, <laughs> yay, I see somebody doing the gun show. All right. So, um, before we, before we end the space ending in like four minutes, you know, I want us to like, um, if you're, if you can hear my voice and you're like not within the space where we are, if you can find your way to the space and let's take a picture, <laughs> it would be good to, if, I think it would be great to have that. So, um, you can, if you want to jump, you can just press on your um, yes, just press on your space bar and you jump. If you want to get up from where you're sitting, you can just um double tap anywhere and you you will be up. Yay! So, uh, I'm gonna in like three, two, one. I'm going to take a picture. So just give any. <laughs> Yeah, we have more people coming too. So if you can hear me and you're outside outside of the where we're currently are, you know, just feel free to come close and take as much pictures as you can. So um thank you very much for joining us again, James. This was a very, very amazing space. Thank you so much for coming. And if you want to connect with James on Twitter, his Twitter name is at James Richard Fry. You just um connect. I think on the email that we sent you, you can find his Twitter link there. So feel free to connect with him, you know, on anything that you know you want to connect with him on for. So yeah, um, yes, thank you for sharing that with us. So we have come to the end of the space, and the world is going to close in about. Yeah, I think that should be in about 20, 20 to 30 minutes. So, <clears throat> so feel free to exit the world. <laughs> if you want to explore, you have like the next 10 to 15 minutes to do that. And yeah, thanks for coming once again. Um, don't forget we have a class on Monday, same time at um 4 30 p.m. UTC. And on Monday we'll talk about community building in web three. We also have another amazing speaker who will be joining us on Thursdays, and I think most of us will be able to us know him, but he's going to stay a surprise until you receive the emails in your inbox. Yeah, so we'll talk about community building. We'll talk about how to set goals, objectives, your target audience, how to create a member personnel, your community identity, onboarding, you know, promoting diversity and inclusivity in your community as well as how to build 
your community guidelines. So if you're already managing a community or um, if you're already managing a community or you just want to get started, you're a season pro or you're just starting out, I think the information would be of value to you. And also, we also gave out a class task on Monday. Um, I will return that to Discord. If you haven't done that, ensure to do that. We're going to have a lot of practicals as we move forward. And those, those activities will contribute to point you know, in passing the test and in getting access to the NFTs that would offer. So yeah, please, um, let's take that seriously. So yeah, that we've come to the end and thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you for coming, bye. Bye. That was a class. I think you can unmute your mic now and you know, if you still want to spend a few more minutes with, with us, <laughs> you can unmute your mic and speak. Thanks for you know having your mics on mute. <laughs> thanks for thanks for that. Um, yeah, so if you want to speak, just indicate and you can unmute and speak now. Hi everyone, it was a great session today. Hey, Obi. <laughs> you know, this Thanks metaverse so is really very, it's Thanks. very interesting. Like, it's just a new experience, a different experience altogether. And I'm loving it. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Did you have any difficulty coming in? Oh no, I didn't because I actually went through the documents that was being sent on how to navigate it. But the, oh. the, the problem I usually encounter was like how to turn around and like, you know, when you're, okay. when you're back in the wall and yeah. stuff like that. But it's really cool figuring things out. <laughs> so that's why I sent like the link 30 minutes earlier. So you can just find your way yeah. in and try to navigate. It's very easy to navigate. You just have to be very careful with your trackpad oh, and yeah. no more. Very, if you move it very fast, your avatar can react very fast. So you just have to be gentle with that and calm.